number two ring, but are you ready to sing? If you don't know the words, don't panic. We shall la la them or titty bum them. That's what we always do. Yes, that's what we always do. <laughs>
So that's what I've got to say on that one. The other one we're talking about tonight, of course, is the story that the sun tan lotion raises the risk of cancer. Sun creams could raise the risk of getting cancer, experts warned. Although they help prevent sunburn, the lotions fail to block out the harmful ultraviolet rays. Now, what sort of idiot thinks that they can go with a fair skin to a very, very sunny country and lie in a skimpy bikini on a beach? This is madness. We have to drop the fact that a tan might be desirable or fashionable. A tan is the fact that your skin has been burned, microwaved. That's what a tan is. Your skin has already been damaged when you go brown. You go red first because it has been burned. And then you may go brown and then peel. But you're upping the risk of getting skin cancer. Look at the people abroad. They wear big, thick black coats and hats to go out in the sun. And we are so stupid that we go and lie on a beach. Now, I'm sorry, but this to me is sheer madness. So I think that people on a sunny day lying on a beach in a bikini or a swimming costume, should get an on-the-spot fine of 50 quid. And it should be treated like we treat wearing your, uh, putting on your headlamps on a dull day. So if the sun is out and people are on the beach lying there in bikinis, an on-the-spot fine. That would be a good moneymaker for the government and lay off the motorists. Right, those are our main subjects for discussion. As you know, we're not wholly, solely and totally a subject-based phone-in, so you don't have to call about the subjects. The telephone number I'm now going to impart to you. I shall impart and then clean it up. Are you ready? Grab yourselves a stub of a hard black pencil, a threepenny jotter with no batter beside your telephone, and get this number down. This is fast becoming the best known telephone number in the country out with the emergency services. Eyes down for a full house. I shall say this only once and then perhaps a thousand times during the course of the evening. Are you ready? 0845 one oh eight four five two four five ten two one now if you dial that number right now you will get beep 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 engaged 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 there is currently a high demand for this service that means the lines are jammed, 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 as you would expect on the country's top radio station and the country's top phone-in programme. Do not let that deter you from calling this programme. Ring and ring and ring and redial and redial and redial until you're blue in the pus, until you can say, I got through to Scotty McClue. The winner never quits and the quitter never wins. This is Public Access Radio. This is your program, your show, your calls. It belongs to the people of Yorkshire and Lincolnshire and Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire and Lancashire. And whether you live in Bradford or Halifax or Grindthorpe or Barnsley or Sheffield or Hull or Beverley or Scunthorpe or Grimsby or Boston or Lincoln or York, it really doesn't matter. Filey, Bridlington, Onsey, this is your radio station and your show. I am Scotty McClue, for those of you who are an alien life form from another planet and you've never heard of me. I'm now off to the tall telephones and I am talking to young Les from out Dinnington. Never know to Mark Miller. We missed you. Oh, no, I missed you. We missed you. Yes, and did you get something from me? Hey, I haven't got it as yet, but I've no doubt it might be here. All right, it might be there. It, it might have been. It might be in the post room, love. Oh... You see? You're missing a good thing, man. Oh, I'll be sorting that out, don't you worry. Yes, you better sort it out. <laughs> you better sort my play, Martin, oh. 
We've got it. Because I've got, I've got We've got it. We've got it. The wizard's shouting. I have got it. Yes, we've got it. Yes. The wizard's shouting, we've got it. Oh, uh, good lad, then. So you're all right, La? Oh, great. Hey, what's up with Tony? Tony, which Tony? Tony the Scouser. He's coming on. Oh, but he has not been coming on. No, he just didn't come on last well, night. my sister-in-law said he didn't come on last night. He didn't come on last night. Oh, but... There was a couple didn't come on last night, so I just wonder if they were having an early night. Oh, the, the, uh, We didn't have John from Barnsley, we didn't have you, we didn't have Tony the Sky, so we didn't have Betty. Oh, well, Betty's coming on late, not tonight, but she's coming back. She'll come on at she some loves, point. She loves thee, man. Is she enjoying the programme? Oh, she loves thee. That's, that's Listen, brilliant. That. Go I've on. Gone, I've gone from a four star to a three star and she's gone to a five star. <laughs> How are you, love? Did you I'm have a good weekend? It, dog. I've been out again with it, dog. Ah, lovely I've that is. I've been golf bowling again. Yep. Yes. Hey, that's lovely the stuff. Lovely damn dog wood again, but yep. not so many balls this time. Hey, yeah, you're some man, so you yeah. Oh, I love it. What do you like? Listen, Les, what does a set of golf clubs cost now, then? Oh, Scotty, the top could cost three and a half grand. Really? Yes. <sighs> that's with all the clubs, the... Well, the driver, the three wood. But can you not get away with about half a dozen? Oh, oh ah, of course you can. Aye. Ah, we've got a shop in Dinnington, a cheap job. They sell clubs about two pound a piece. And half a dozen would do it. So I'd be oh, able, ah. I could get started for about 12 uh, quid. Well, I'm going to get there at it. <laughs> hey, listen. <laughs> Go guess, on, love. Guess what somebody gave me on the internet at Nottingham? Um, a given. Your photo. Never. Ah. Yes, hey, off so the you, internet. You've seen your but I've got. I look very like you, though, don't I? Oh, hey, listen. You've never seen a resemblance listen. like that, have you? I, I'll tell you what. The nose and the eyes. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Perfect. If ever I was your lad, that's that's proof, isn't it? Uh, yes. <laughs> they're not my lad. They're my granddad. <laughs> 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 Oh, it's nice to be back, man. <laughs> it's great to, to have you, but you mustn't miss the phone in the lights. You'll have to get Listen, them at the hey, golf club. Hey, if a person misses this, they're missing half of the life. You're missing your life, love. You, oh, miss, a, you miss a minute of McClue, you miss a minute of life. That keeps saying becoming the best phone, and it's become the best I phone. I know, it. but Les, wait till I tell you this, love. Right. Wait till I tell you this, love. It's growing all the time. It's growing, it's growing. It's bigger gone. and bigger it's and brighter and the, better all the time. It's gone to the top of the stars, this one, boy. Do you know, and you? that's the most important. The students are listening, the taxi drivers are listening. Yes. Everybody's and, flaming listening. And if they don't get on, there's something wrong. They can't get on half of them. The only people <laughs> that can't get on is them that's deaf. Absolutely, love. Absolutely. They'll have to start coming on telly and reading it out. <laughs> That's the stuff. It's great, that is. We'll have to start doing that we'll for them. We'll have a television programme as well. Do you know what I was thinking? I think there should be some facility on the telly where you can get somebody signing. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, it's a bit... I watch the telly at night and they do they do sign... I think they think that deaf people only watch at night. Yeah, that's right. They do it late in the morning, they do don't it they? Late in morning, late at night, yeah. all that stuff. Now, I think to myself, if you're not deaf, then it's quite irritating with somebody signing away in the corner of the telly. That's right. And they should have a facility for deaf people that you can get the signing on. That, 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 they're not just a pretty face. No, I'm not as daft as I look, love. Yeah, I'll tell you. No, they're not without photos. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when you this couldn't lady, be as daft as that, could when you? When this lady showed me, I said, well, there's a pair, there's Fred Dimner and, and Scotty Look. <laughs> look ne- alike. You nearly fainted. I did. I said, they're both, <laughs> they're, they're, they're both millionaires. You said, oh, I didn't realise he was such a handsome beast. <laughs> oh, hey, I love the way Captain Scarf on it. Oh, wow. Hey, I'll tell you how that all started, lad. When I went up to Scotland the first time, right? Yeah. I uh, all the newspapers were very interested in this mystery man on the radio. So they said the Yorkshire people seem to be sort of less fired up like this, but in Scotland they're very hot on the old news, right? Yeah. So they had to get a picture of this Scotty McClure, and it was midwinter. It was December the twelfth, right? Yeah. <laughs> December the 12th, and... <laughs> you got to do it, scarf and cap on. I had me scarf and cap because it was so flame. You know what it's like in East, oh, East, oh. East Central Scotland in December the 12th, like. Oh. You can't keep your feet for the wind. Oh, no. Right? Leith, just down from Edinburgh. 
Yes. You'll know, you'll know. I know where that is. Right, I know the rest of it. And you can't keep your feet at that time, you said. On me cap, scarf the lot. And the guy goes, excuse me, Mr. McClue, I'm going to take your photo. I said, well, take, take it, it then. Take it as I am. And it was splashed all over the world, that photo. Well, I'll tell you what, it's brilliant, man. So it's so everyone now I'll put me I cap on. I, I put think... me cap on because otherwise everyone goes, Oh, it's Scotty McClue. <laughs> I didn't think they looked as handsome as that. Beautiful, eh? Whoa. <laughs> I've picked hey, up no, your looks. No wonder that I can keep pulling all these young women. I've got your looks, but sadly I haven't got your money. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they'd have a deal. <laughs> I haven't got your charm. Oh, listen. <laughs> Listen, you can't catch old birds with your feet, you know. <laughs> you cannot, love. <laughs> Even with the cover blown. <laughs> hey, hey. These, these two are hey. asylum people. Aye. We don't want them, Scotty. No, I'm sorry, Les, but I mean, I don't mind helping out a poor soul, right? That's right. But if they're going to come up and act out and all the rest of it, acting up here, you know what I mean? Well, I told you, uh, maybe six months ago, this country's got too good of a soft, soft touch for everything. Well, I think from midnight tonight, they should come away from that conference in uh, in, in uh, Labour Party conference yeah. thing, you know, in wherever it is again. <laughs> What's the name of the place? I can't remember. I can't remember. It's that important. And, uh, <laughs> Not important for me. It's that important. I can't remember where they've gone. But uh, they should come away from that, pass emergency legislation and say, no more asylum in the UK. No. That's it. Forget it. No. Because I mean, our police out there, our police out there, chasing now, these people. There's people and people, same as us. There's bad people and, and good people. What ne really need it? But every, every even bad ones is getting yeah, it. Well, I'm sorry though, Les, but I mean, in the case of this country, we can say you can get it somewhere else, Les. We don't do it. Yeah, we don't go in for that. Take them in, Scotty. We don't go in for that. Here. Only like you shouldn't be allowed in this country unless you've got a British passport. That's right. And the rest of it, you say, I'm seeking asylum. They say, right, well, get that boat over there and they'll take you out to the North Sea. And they'll put you on the oil rig until we sort you out. That's it. Do you know, and that's yeah. it. But uh, other countries... I'm sorry, like... Les, it's not like me not to be a fine, upstanding, you know, caring well, gentleman. Are. But, I mean, I've just had enough of it. I'm fed up with that, can I carry on? You uh, know? Oh, we've asked to come into this country, but we'll just treat you all like shecht. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not on, Les. No, it's in town, Scotty. You know, we've got a... I mean, the beautiful thing about this country is this country used to exist on its respect for each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's... And we don't want to lose that, Les. No. You know? Well... And all this two fingers stuff, we're here now, so two fingers to you lot. Yes, and me too. And the right way. You know? Not, not a victory, but the other one. The other one, ah, that's, yeah. that's what they do, Les. Well, I, I always put four up so I can double it up. That's it. Ah. That's it. That's what they should do. Yep. Make Yorkshire asylum yeah, free. Well, I'm going to give you a bit of information now. Well, go on, Les. Tomorrow morning, we're taking two of the young ferrets out and two of the old bitches, and we're off. Hey, brilliant. We're off for a, a, a second. We're off to see the wizard. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That'll be wonderful, that is. Hey, whoa, <laughs> that, that li little dog ferret is still nipping. Is he? Yeah, he's still... But when did, when did hey, that hey listen, he'll stop his nonsense when you nip him. I'll, go, I'll nip him. <laughs> I'll nip him tomorrow. Oh, he's like lightning. <laughs> and is it, is, it, is it nasty? Is it bad? No, yeah, no, it just nips. Oh, and is it, is it so? Uh, he, he thinks, uh, I'll have a go at Les. He's, he's my gaffer. Yeah. I thought, yes. I got hold on him, I'll flick my finger off my thumb right across his nose and he went... Oh, I don't think I'll nip him no I more. I maybe won't do that. I used to go out with a bod like that, you know, and she'd just nip you, and that and she wasn't being handled enough. But, oh, we, but we, she, soon, we soon sorted that. She was nipping <laughs> in right, please, I reckon. <laughs> I said, you're nipping me because you've not been handled enough, love. <laughs> <laughs> she don't nip now. <laughs> Came there, then. Hey, there was a lovely Les. I'll leave you with this one. Do you remember a film called The Million Dollar Note? Or The yeah. Million Pound Note it was or something. I can't yeah, remember. I can it was, remember. Uh, who was in it now? Was it uh, Gregory Peck? Gregory Peck, Gregory yeah. Gregory Peck, uh, Wilfred Hyde White. Yes. All that lot. And uh, there was this old gent, you know, and uh, the commissioner at the hotel says to him, there's a bit of a crowd out front, sir. I should nip round the back if I were you. And this old posh boy goes, I do not nip. <laughs> <laughs> 
I do not nip. I do not They nip. didn't like it, you know, and all that stuff, you know. That's what you find with some of the toffee noses. You go, here, here's a bit of cake for you. And they go, thank you. I'll have it on a plate if you don't mind. Oh, yes, say, Right, sir. well, stuff you. Get a plate right, yourself. I, I always say, yes, sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Three bags full. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Yes, love. Becky wants to, for Tony to read that poem he's made for her out. Oh, right. But he's recording it tonight. Oh, if good. He's coming on. Oh, well, he will do then. Yes. All right, Les. Listen. Go on. I think you're fabulous. Young I think man. you're fabulous. I love thee. Listen. And you have a good Listen. day tomorrow. My heart, my heart goes with thee, and it, uh, and, uh, and it's pumping every time it comes. Right. To I it. put my heart beside thine. There uh, you are, listen. now. That's it now. Listen. Go on. And love. give my regards to Joan at Rotherham and tell her about a haircut. You've had air cuts? Yes, I've had him trimmed. Heavens above. <laughs> and if you have a chance to get that photo tonight, if we can get it, just let, I'll be listening. Yeah. And just let me know what they think. That'll be lovely, that. It's great, Scotty. Hey, and dinky do, love. And dinky do. God and bless have a great, thee. Have a great night. You have a great night. All okay. them beautiful people. You're everything, you're everything that's good about Yorkshire. Now, listen. Yes. You're everything that's good won't come out of Scotland, you. <laughs> You, uh, you, you just, I just called you one of the breasts. Don't thou bully me you up the now. Best, the breasts, the <laughs> Good night, Scotty. I'll see you, love. God bless so you. God bless that night. What a nice man. Right, young lads from out Dinnington, 0845 245 10 to wind. The lines are jammed, 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 as you'd expect. But please, keep ringing, keep ringing. We will get you all on. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live on Magic. We're right across Yorkshire. And it's 25 minutes past 10. Across Yorkshire, Across Yorkshire, this is the Scotty McClue Magic Megaphone. Magic Meg on 0845 245 1021. That's the number to ring if you want to talk to me, Scotty McClue. We are exceptionally busy tonight, and I mean exceptionally busy tonight. But keep your calls coming, and we will try and get you all on. You are listening to the country's top radio station, and this is the country's top phone in programme. Back I go to the telephones. I'll just have a quick chat to Mandy, who's in Leeds. Are you there, Mandy Love? Hello, Mandy. Hello, Mandy. Mandy, Mandy, Mandy. Can you hear me, love? Right, she can't hear us. Okay, no problem. If you're not there as soon as I call your name, I'm going to have to move on. We are far too busy for that. Debbie. Yes, speaking. Ah, good evening, love. Good evening, my sweetheart. Welcome, 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 <laughs> I say. Well, we're, we're talking about the asylum seekers. Oh, no, I've had enough of it, Debbie. I just I can't I know. believe it. You know, I, ten, ten, they come over here and they and agree they, with you more. You know, they start escaping and our, our police, our tax money, the whole flaming lot, and then they're expecting Absolutely. DSS money benefits while we go, and then they're going to disappear. Of course, exactly. Work illegally and upset the whole system, and it's just Debbie. It just needs somebody to say that is not how we do things That's here. Right. Yeah, I Sorry, mean, wrong country. Absolutely, but the thing is, the French get rid of them, so they can come over here freely. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm just nobody should get into this country until you've produced absolutely your British passport. Not. Absolutely not. You know, and I... if you can't produce, say, yeah, we'll give you a sign, and we've got some old North Sea platforms. If you're sure uh, that this is better for you than your own country, we will stick you on them. Yeah. If you'd rather go back to your own country, there's no problem, but that's the best we can offer here. You certainly cannot come into the United Kingdom, right, because it's not what we do here. Right. And also, you don't understand... But we do do it. That's the problem. You know, yeah, but we're mad. And as I say, they should, I come away. they should come away from the Labour conference tonight, pass emergency legislation and say, from tomorrow, you know, we don't do it anymore, love, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, they're coming over here, they're getting free housing after all these pensioners, are, you know, are living on a basic income. And they, they have to have a certain standard, the landlords have to put a certain standard of carpet in mm. and, and uh, general furnishing. So they can live here, and they haven't paid a penny into the system. Crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely intolerable. Crazy piece of nonsense. But the other thing is, we are paying for it, the taxpayers. Oh, now, I, know we I are. think out of respect for us, these people should say, I'm sorry, we will not escape, we will not mistreat your country, we will not act the fool at all. There was, there was uh, some years ago, and I um, had to, I'd been offered a job in Saudi Arabia. Mm. And when I went to get my ticket, the people said, you can't go. 
And I said, why? And they said, because you're blonde and you're young and you're attractive. I'm going back some years ago now. And I said, well, why on earth I've got a contract to work there and everything? And they said, you won't be left alone because of the way I looked. Absolutely. And I said, well, you know. Pest of the life out of you. Well, what do I do? Yeah. You know. You send me your picture as soon as you can. <laughs> <laughs> little devil. <laughs> But the thing is, if we go over so, there... Sorry, sorry, love, that was... Uh, all right. That was very, very, very forward of me. I do I know apologize. You, I know, well, <laughs> there you go. But go if on. we go and live in their country, hmm? we've got to follow their rules. Yeah, the other if thing is, if, Debbie, if you nicked anything, if, if, if you, anything you get your hand chopped off. If you went with one of their girls, they'd kill oh, you. Sure. You know, all that stuff. You know, if you started drinking in a non-drinking country, there'd be hell on. If you Absolutely. take drugs in the Far East, they kill you. You know, they shoot you. It's all that sort of thing. And they all drink on the side anyway. You know, I know, but I mean, it's just crazy nonsense. It is. It's it's unbelievable. I mean, as I said to you earlier. Do you know, and why is this country saying yes? You can, of course, you can come in. Because nobody else will take them. Well, we're it's, a nanny state. it's madness. We're absolutely We've completely, a nanny state. Completely lost the place, and you know, I mean, it only needs to be enforced. It only needs somebody to say, you know, I'm sorry, but we're very, very strict on it. You misbehave, you go home, and when these people are caught, they should be put straight back in the plane. We shouldn't even get here in the first place. Do you know? Straight back in the plane you know, and that's it. because they want to come over here and live their life as they did where they came from. So if it's that good where they came from and they want to continue that kind of life I just, think, I just think somebody is taking the, 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 the mince out of us big time. Well, just let them go back and live their lifestyle over there. Mm. Let us live our lifestyle. You know, I'm... We've yeah, talked. and we need to have our lifestyle back, though. I mean, we We've need to actually this, this, this is how we live. We've talked about this before, but if it's so good over there and they want to live their life how they live it, then stay where you are. Let us live our life how we perceive it over here, and you stay where you are and live your life how you perceive it. Absolutely, absolutely. And end of conversation, really. That's it. End of story. End of. End of. You know, and it should happen. And it should. It should happen. And rightly so. There's all these pensioners in this country who've had the, um, the pensions and everything, you know, cut to the quick. Yes. You know, where they've fought wars and everything. You know, they've, they've gone for, for country and what have you. And they're living on a basic pension. And then these people come in, they've never contributed to anything. That's madness. And then they get, so they have certain quality carpets, certain quality fittings and so on. And then they, they all walk around how they dress. Yeah, and I mean, I think what people should do, they should write to their MP and say, please include have... this in your election mandate, right? Don't come up. Tell us what you're going to do about asylum. Tell us what you're going to do about tax. And if if the government then, uh, you know, deviate from these promises, mm -hmm. then they are in breach and should be censured. So they should. You know, it should actually be censured. They should Absolutely. say, I'm sorry, you know, like this government told us there'd be no tax rises and they've gone up 60 <laughs> times, you know. So, and the council you know, tax. <laughs> so six, 60 whoppers we've been told so far, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a big, big mess out there that we're just not getting the whole story. Yeah, because what we should do is live our life as we live, as English people. Yes. And they should live if the Muslims or Hindus or whatever, and I'm not saying they're, they're all bad, there's good and bad in everybody, as in English people, but the thing is, they should, if they think they, their lifestyle is so much better, what do they want to do coming here? Absolutely. Fair point, Debs. Fair point. Lovely to talk to you. All right, sweetheart. Yes. I'm off now. All right. <laughs> I, I still think your photo would be nice up in the wall of the studio, but there we are. <laughs> <laughs>
I'll see you, babes. All right. Thanks again. Too. Have Bye. a lovely night. Dinky Bye. do, love. Oh, my regards to Matthew, by the way. Oh, yeah, he's fabulous, isn't he? I know. He's quality <laughs> stuff. You love him. <laughs> uh, yes. No, what do you mean by that? <laughs> he's a cracker. I hey, know. you okay. take care, love. Dinky do. Dinky do. No, no, God bless. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. What a super lady. She's quite right, actually. This, of course, is the story of the asylum seekers who have escaped 20 of them during a breakout in South Yorkshire and 10 of them still missing uh, at last count tonight. And I say, enough is enough. This is a blatant lack of respect for authority in this country. And, uh, you know, we've got to uh, stamp our authority. We do have authority in this country so that everyone can have a quality of life and people are just bending the rules and giving it the two fingers and i'm sorry but i for one think this is appalling behavior and uh, these people should be sent straight back to where they came from the the you know they haven't come here to misbehave and if they've come here to seek asylum they should live by our rules it's as simple as that right if you've just joined us welcome to the program we are extremely busy tonight keep your calls coming 0845 245 1021 if you're on the line and ringing do not surrender your place in the queue you. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live on Magic. That is the country's top radio station. This is the Massive Magic Megaphone Inn. We are right across Yorkshire, the Midlands and the surrounding area. And the time is uh, 21 minutes to, to 11 o'clock. Across Yorkshire, across Yorkshire, this is the Scotty McClue Magic Megaphone Inn. Magic Megaphone Inn now on 0845 245 1021. This is the Scotty McClue Massive Magic Megaphone Inn. Quality radio for the people of Yorkshire, Lincolnshire, Lancashire, Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire and the surrounding area. To your telephones at Speed I say 0845 245 1021. Welcome to all our student listeners. I know that uh, you're back to uni this week. We've uh, had Freshers' Week last week and this week. And a very warm welcome to you lot, of course. This is your local radio station, and this is where Yorkshire talks. This is where the nation gathers for general chit-chat with the CH and anything that they want to discuss live for three hours, five nights a week, three hours a night, Sunday, well, Thursday, 10 o'clock sharp until 1 o'clock sharp. 2200 to 0100. Right, also if you're a taxi driver, turn up your radio and entertain your passengers. That's what we say. Magic is the country's top radio station. It's on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, playing all the country's top music for 21 hours of the day and top chit-chat for 3 hours each night with me, Scotty McClue. Back I go to the telephones. I'm talking to Tony, the scouter. Hello there. Hello, La. Hi, yeah. Uh, hey, where have you been? Oh, just looking after the the boss. Oh, that's it, right? I've missed phoning you and talking to you. I've missed you. I thought she'd said, "I don't want you on to your little chum anymore, Tony." That's it. Even if she did, it wouldn't <laughs> make any difference. But <laughs> she she's the numero uno. Or, or oh, like, she is numero uno. She, she always she will be numero uno. That is not a problem. I just know what the missus can be like when the lads get on the phone in. You know. You like to think they are. They go uh, deep, like deep. you said before, it was tickled pink. Oh, you're not talking to that blinking Scotty McClure again, are you? <laughs> and I've been saying what you say, you know. When she starts to talk down to me, I say, listen, I'm not as daft as I look. She says, Absolutely. no, you're right there, no one's <laughs> that bloody stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the women don't like too much macho chat on the wireless, you know. They don't like when the lads get together and start, uh, you know, comparing from, comparing notes. Apart from that, uh, another reason, though, really speaking, Go on, and I'm serious, but I, I don't know, want I to know. temper things, so it, it, it is true to a great modicum what you're saying, but a lot of their need stems from the fact of her illness, you know. I know that, Tony. Yeah, yeah, don't I don't want to uh, not give it. She gets very uh, self, self, sort of self-centered, yes. but not in that way, if you no, know No, I, I mean. know, love. I'm only she teasing. Just, no, I know. No, I know you are. She is numero uno. She comes first, and that's the most important thing. You know what I mean? I'm just saying in general, you know, the women like to oh, noise their men up. This is what they you go, like, are, like. You, are you ringing your little pal again so you can chit-chat all that clever talk? Hey, don't get me wrong, right? Uh, <laughs> no, we have good rows because listen, uh, I, I, I've no, no, I've not lost any form of respect in any way, shape, or form for our lass uh, because 
anything's happened to her, and and she's became I've got this debilitating illness. You of know, course. I love her all the more because she's she. Of and, course, uh, she is. I w- I'm not. I'm one of these old-fashioned people, Scotty. My little, and I don't care if anyone laughs about it. I'm a little bit chivalrous. If I'm with somebody and I pledge my love to them, that's it. Well, I'm only chivalrous when I'm cold. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know what you mean. I like a bit of chivalry. And listen, your lass is obviously the best. There's no doubt about that. But I just know, I just know what the women are like when they're with the guys. Because they they, a lot of women actually be, they, they begrudge the men coming on here because... Because it gives them too much strength when control. they get on here, you know. Women control you, don't uh, I give, I give the lads the back up. You see, I say, get on there. I know you do, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like you've only got to wear a woman's scream at the top of her voice and the street clears. Oh, that's, 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 that's it. it. I'm telling you, I've that. seen, I've seen a woman clear the pub coming in I here. Don't, I don't know that. And she says, "You get up the <laughs> stairs now. Scotland. Get up the stairs now." And then she turns around, she looks and she goes, and you, Scotty McClue, should know better. <laughs> I'll tell you one night, wait, I'll tell you, this, I was in the pub one night, right, and do you know what happened? Right, I thought, she knows who I am, because she comes in and she points like this, she goes, you get up the stairs for your tea. And she turns around and I'm laughing, I said, you better go, John, that's, it looks like that's last orders for you, love. Right, and she turns around and she goes, she goes like this, and she goes, and you should know better. And I thought, she knows it's McClue here. And she goes, if you're a taxi driver. <laughs> I'm standing there with my flat cap. And in Scotland, she thought I was a taxi driver. <laughs> hey, hey, do you know what? <coughs> what I think you said about the asylums. Yes. Because it's absolutely right, but... There'll not be any legislation with this government's got it. Well, they should, they should leave that. They should leave the conference right now, yeah. right? And uh, where is it? They are again. Bournemouth. They, Bournemouth. Bournemouth. I knew it was down the south coast. The other lot were in Brighton last week. That's right. Right. No, that's it. I like when they come to Blackpool. So do I. But, uh, got a bit of sick there, though, well, no, they can hear. They can hear. They, they can hear Scotty McClue when they used to come to Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we'll know. have to get them up to Scarborough next year. That's where you want to be, Scotty. Sometime yeah. in that on that bloody uh, uh, Golden Mile doing a show, the Scotty McClue show. It's got to McClue stand up. Do you, know comedy. What, do you know what I think we should do, Tony? Right, we should do yeah. a one night only at some of the big venues. Aye. Scotty McClue, one night only. Yeah. I'll have a right laugh and a carry-on oh, and every bloody thing. Just, oh, just, just a flaming good carry-on. The hoolie in the kitchen. Oh, just a tell. Hey, but, but, uh, I'll you tell know. you this. I told you the night I conducted the Halley Orchestra at Manchester yeah. Arena in front of about 10,000 people. Did the people know you were going to do it like No, that? I think... <laughs> it, 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 no, they didn't. It was a surprise. No, but you knew, they knew that you knew you were going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it wasn't spontaneous. Well, you didn't jump, jump up and do it. Like I would. It was a surprise love for them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I got away with, uh, I got away with Toss and running on to the, uh, 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 to the theatre in the Crucible when the uh, uh, bottom was talking and I got the sense to run on and speak some Shakespeare in lies and I had to quell myself not to do it at all. So you better go take your medication when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, isn't it? No, but I mean, I mean it, it, would, it would be good one night only. Oh, one night only, yeah. The Scotty McClue Nobody show. Told me about the full one, one night only, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, the and then, and then, Tony, Tony, what? Tony, back by popular demand. <laughs> <laughs> one more oh, night due to demand. I don't leave and Michael Barrymore had to be nights and was come back. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? No, it's all right. Oh, no, no. Sorry. How are you, love? Oh, well, how well, do you think I'm talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> I was a bit down before you came, was <laughs> <See? laughs> it? I still spoke to you, love. Do you think I'd be talking to you if I was all right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good crack. Uh, I uh, see you. Uh, listen, no. I listen. Have, have you got? Have you got a poem for? Uh, have you got a poem yeah, for, for that lady? For Betty. You're not going to cut me off when I'm so there, are you? No, of course I'm oh, not. All right then. All right. When then. have so I ever cut you Betty off? Youngs, I want to just tell you about something I saw today. Go on, love. Go on. Right, do you want this poem, right? No, I'll, I'll hear. I'll hear you first if you oh, like. Oh no, I was just saying there. Uh, 
Do you know where uh, I know? I, I was laughing myself at first, and I thought <laughs> it was a bit sad. But Till has got a, a new album out. They had one of the songs today, Scott, and it wasn't a bad duck. Brilliant. No, it's wonderful. She, it was a wonderful song. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for her age, and she, to tell you the truth, she's a lot better than she used to sound, because I didn't like her all that much at the beginning. Some of the songs were wonderful, like that Alfie in there. Oh, yeah. but that's all personal. I mean, you know, yeah. whether you like somebody or not. It's, a, it's very much a personal opinion, an artist, you know. But I admire her for what she wants to do, you know. Oh, brilliant. She's still got an incest, you No, know? it's good stuff. So, so uh, hey... So, do you know what you were saying, though, Scotty? I might become a pop singer. <laughs> well, listen, Scotty, this, is no dege- this isn't to degenerate your uh, talent around, but you, if you became a pop singer now, there wouldn't be an awful lot of composition love to get to number one. <laughs> but anyone with a I decent, know. half-decent voice and a little catchy tune, from what I can see. And do you know what, though, Scotty? Go on, love. Uh, this thing about this government, I, I don't know whether you're allowed to say it, or not, but I suppose I can. It's any freedom of speech. I don't think Tony Blair's got another term with the new Labour, the old Labour, or any other Labour. Well, and I, I think we were much better off for the, over the last 30, 30 years, 10 decades, we've been much better off under any Conservative government, economically speaking, so to speak, than any Labour for the last 30 years has been able to provide. There's only been two or three. Yes, years. yes. No, but I don't think we're a country that actually suits a Labour government, to be honest. You know, they come in and sort of, uh, you know, do maximum, it, it, maximum it's damage. It's only name, Scotty. Maximum damage, and then it's all got to be put right again. You know what I mean? This I mean, the, what, what, what we're needing to do, we're needing to get back to making it quite clear to the rest of the world that we are a monarchy, you know, that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, we, we have the Queen as our head of state. We need to get the economy back I on track. I mean, the stock, the, market, the stock market's worth 50%. It's between rich and poor, Do you know, new labour. Well, of course it does. Of course, because you can't, you can't you say, can't you can't say, Tony, Tony, can't Tony, 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 look, you can't say, masters, can you? you can't say, let's be socialist and no. all be poor. Yeah. That's not the way no. the world works. We are a capitalist nation. Of course we are. Do you I know, mean, we're not a third world nation. No. And there's no point in screwing everybody, uh, taking savings off pensioners and no, giving them not. to asylum seekers, I you know. know. You said there's no point either in trying to win uh, do you know, public do you know, support, support by throwing it into a flounder and uh, thing. The health service... Do you know, do you know that there is, no, there, there, is no, there is no long-term care plan for the elderly? I know that. Do you know? That's why all these uh, homes and that is had to shut and elderly has been in the I mean, quarantine. Say, I think, to be honest, the welfare state needs overhaul because the I thing... It was, it, it's 54 years old, right? Yeah. In 55 years old, in fact. And uh, it was it was a bit utopian in the first place, but it, it was, served yeah. us quite well. But people are just taking the rip out of it now. Oh, of course they are. They're just taking a lend of it. Get seen to then, uh, do you know? With more, more experience than you, British do, people. Do you know that, that I was I was I was reading the other day that uh, oh. you know drug dealers make thousands and thousands of pounds a night. Of course they do. You know. Well, of course they do. And do you know where do you know where one of the big drug factories is? Liverpool. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. I'm not proud of that, Scotty. You know, but amazing. And I'm proud of the fact there's at least four or five big drug factories in Sheffield. Look. It was in the paper the other day. It's all in the papers. The greatest haul up to now of cannabis was found in heroin, uh, in uh, 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 Sheffield, in uh, uh, skunk cannabis. Amazing. A couple of months back, the biggest find. In I didn't think skunk smoked cannabis. I didn't, but uh, I do believe they've got a funny smell from the tails <laughs> when they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God! But no, it's, it's it's very very strange. Just the whole thing, the whole balance has gone crazy, you know. It has. I've had a right laugh, you know, Scotty, with our last this week, tantalising. I've been going like that. Come on, Tanya girl. Come on, girl. To annoy, you know, and you know, she reaches out to try and whack me, Scotty. I'm away like the wind. She drives fear into my heart and run off from She it. just adores you, that woman. She's bigger than me. She Scotty. adores you almost as much as you adore her. I, 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 <laughs> I, I don't know what has ever happened if I was without her. She adores you almost as much as you adore she her. She adores me almost as much. I, I adore her almost as much as she hates me. It's a love relationship. I love her and she hates me. She's fabulous. She's <laughs> not all the time, lad. She has a moment, like, that's all I'm going to say. But it's very funny. I mean, for years, couples have always been doing the nuts about Scotty McClure. You try to tune into that Scotty McClure again. I didn't know that, Scotty. 
Oh yeah, they do. They they, they do. They're not. You know the guy. Goes, no, no, I wasn't. Ah, uh, but <laughs> I can draw the happy medium, can't you, Scotty? Of I'm course you can. You're brilliant, you are. Oh, now, you're listen. a master baker, did you say? Oh, I'm, no, I'm, no, well, I'm a master baker, but careful uh, how you I say that. <laughs> now, listen. <laughs> now, listen. I, I am by profession a master baker. Oh, yeah, okay. Yep. No, <laughs> McClue's Pies. McClue's Pies. Don't let it work. McClue's pies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now listen. <laughs> <laughs> right. Are you going? Yes. Are you going to do this poem, La? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm That'd be right. lovely. That uh, is. It's called Sweet Dreams, right? And this is for Betty. For Betty. Right. Lovely. I dream of you and the dancing gears, holding on onto your sleeve, warm with gladness, tinged with tears, holding so tight you can't leave. Now single footsteps mark the beach, where once there were two. Yet you are never out of reach, as in the dancing years I dream of you. It's lovely once again, please, right. Tony. I dream of you in the dancing years, holding on to your sleeve. Warm with gladness, tinged with tears, holding so tight you can't leave. Now single footprints mark the beach, where once there were two. Yet you are never out of reach, as in the dancing years I dream of you. It's gorgeous. You're wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Scotty. You're wonderful. You're a genius. You are, uh, lovely you're man. Wonderful. You're a lovely you're man. The essence of life Listen, itself. Real love you to you. Brilliant. Real love to you and real love to you, love lass. To you and everybody. Listen, Scotty. Because you're beautiful I people. See you soon. And listen, listen, I only take the mick because I love you both. Ah, you don't take the mick with me. It's impossible, you me pal. Do you know I what I mean? You. And God bless you all our listeners. And the two of you are so lucky to have each other. Well, you're right there, Scotty. You know. She wouldn't agree with that, but you're right there, Scotty. Oh, she will uh, do. I know she, <laughs> she just won't agree with you. She but... wouldn't let anyone know that. Right? <laughs> she'll, she'll let me off with it. She said it's worth me weight in gold, but her money is well. I'm as right as a fly. <laughs> I think that's the deal. She said it's worth me weight in gold. I've got the world's race. She came you... me on the ground when it's windy. When you're dancing with her, she said, you don't think I'm light in my feet? She said, you might be light in your own, you're like a ton of coal in mine. <laughs> I'll see you, love. See love you, love. God bless. Night, night. God bless, mate. What a lovely man. Tony the Scouser, and he's a good lady, of course, who teases him about not getting on to McClue, but uh, why not? Right, you're listening to Yorkshire's top radio station. That is Magic Radio for Yorkshire, of course. 0845 245 10 to 1. And Lincolnshire. If you're there, Grimsby, Scunthorpe, Cleethorps, all these wonderful places. Scarborough, Bridlington, Filey, Beverly, Hull, Barnsley, Sheffield, Rotherham, Huddersfield, Halifax. Oh, dear goodness me. Right, I'm talking to Pete, who's in Sheffield. Are you there, Pete? Hey, up, Peter. Hello, Peter. Yes, got to hello. Are you all right, mate? Yeah. I hope you're not going to wind me up tonight. <laughs> no, I would <laughs> I'm not annoyed with you, but it, what it would have been, what it were, what it turned out to be an animal bone. That's what it turned out. Oh, to thank be. God! Yeah, that's all it turned out to be. <laughs> I thought you were winding me up there. No, I've actually seen I've seen a big bone in a churchyard, and the dogs bring them with them when people take them there. You know. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, but right. it's a bit unnerving at first. <laughs> Hey, Scotty, I've got a subject, a better society. Do you know what you're on about with asylum seekers? Yeah. A better society. Go on. Well, first of all, I'll comment on asylum seekers. Right. Because I think, I think like, I've, I've thought about it, and I've thought about it deeply. And sometimes I think that these asylum seekers, you know, that if, if, if they are genuine, which some might be, it's like most things in society, they'll always be somewhat given. Um, Dorothy, a bad name. So if some asylum seekers are genuine, then I think they should definitely prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that they are definitely uh, being uh, victimised in their country. And none ought seem to be able to do that, Scotty, do they? You know, they don't seem to go to... Uh, in fact, they're not even required by British law to uh, be asked to prove that they've been... I just, I just think, I think the whole asylum seeking thing is a racket. I think it is money driven. I think it is driven both by the money that they think they can make out of us, the taxpayers of the UK, and I think it's driven by criminal gangs trying to make a few quid shipping human people, human, uh, uh, you, you know, human beings. 
human yeah. people, human beings. Yeah, like I think what like I think it's a similar situation actually, Scotty, to what happened uh, when they first started letting people, foreign people, come in country, uh, like almost as commodities. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you oh. see, in actual fact, they're not really a commodity, are they? They're just a drain on the country's very, very hard-pressed resources. Well, I think, I think, I think that government, that government has definitely got an ulterior motive in letting them in. They're not that stupid, are they? Well, they you wouldn't, you wouldn't yeah. think so, but I mean, you know, they, I would imagine they could put a stop to it pretty swiftly if they got their act together. Yeah, but, you know, and it's, it's, you see, what gets me, Scott, it's not the, the people, you know, in Parliament who... Or necessarily living next to them, you know, it's uh, it's the ordinary, you know, ordinary common person. Who's I mean, I think, I think to be honest, if they are going to take asylum seekers in, they should move them into Westminster. Yeah, definitely. Do you know, just definitely. so that they can see what's going on, as a, you know, just to keep the government absolutely in touch with the people. Yeah, because you know, they, you know, they're not in touch. You know, Westminster Borough Council should be, you know, the 